okay okay so uh pro traders we aim to enter the market when it's quiet okay and we take profit when when market starts to move or run okay uh, typically what we do in our in our traders group lah, okay but uh, if you are in the forums you are in you know those facebook forums or any other groups are in that matter the tips groups especially you see a lot of images or uh, maybe they are not uh, typically active in the market and stuff okay so when they appear they jump in or they jump out after the price starts to run okay uh, typically you will see the forum very very excited when when the market when the stock or the market is high okay for example if you can remember last time the gloves so when the forum really starts to become really busy really excited every day a lot of posts every day is like all in all in all you know <laughs> that is uh after the gloves uh, actually run up a lot maybe more than more than half or almost double already. then all the hoo-ha begin to come in and um, you know my brokers say until now the account opening the stocks account opening is still uh, queuing long queue a, a very long backlog of account opening still waiting uh, in their broker house because of this because too many people jump in some some uh, from this you can see that uh, from what my broker say you can see that these are purely purely zero experience newbies because they are coming in they jump in they want to open an account first you know from there you and you will know that uh, they are really newbies okay they have never been in the market before so that's when they appear they just jump in when the price already very high and uh, after all the hoo-ha, the stocks cups uh, starts to sideways and then starts to come down a bit. So what happens to them? They grow bored and they become disinterested. Okay, when the price is sleepy, and then when the price starts to move again, <laughs> they jump in again. So uh, this uh, difference uh, totally determines whether you are making money or you are losing money in the market because if you really jump in when the market is wow uh, you can't be buying ex uh, you can't be buying cheap already it must be a lot of people already bought okay because a lot of people already bought then only the price goes up right so the latest example bitcoin right <laughs> so uh bitcoin uh so many messages I get uh, lately, la, lately. Uh, this few days not so much because we all know it came down already and then but uh, past few days it was 18,000, 19,000 near the all-time high okay all the I get a lot of message la. so uh, those who are not in Bitcoin yet but probably they are just you know normal investors or traders it starts appearing and starts to ask about Bitcoin, which is a good sign for us who are already in it. Okay, but um, again, uh, I see this happening. Okay, they appear when the price actually already run up. Okay, that's when they appear. So I keep telling the group, I say, you look at this now. Uh, after breakout ten thousand, all the people who haven't been talking to you for the past five or ten years uh, suddenly will message you hey can buy or not uh, that's when they come in so uh if you can you know switch from the orange triangle switch to the green triangle then you see a very big difference in your bottom line as a trader in your profit and loss okay p and l it's a bit counterintuitive uh, to ask you to, you know, when it's quiet, it's sideways, it's people say very sian, this kind of movement, very sian, so they, dis they disappear. Uh. So when is it not sian? <laughs> when it's when it's very wild, okay, when people already, uh, the price already goes up, then it's very excited. That time you jump in, 
then GG already, uh, right? So, uh, which is why we always say that trading is a very boring uh, business, really. If you feel really excited every time, you are probably doing the wrong thing, okay? Doing the trading wrongly, okay? So it's supposed to be boring because you're supposed to monitor when it's boring and find the nicest entry or buy cheap. And then when it starts to move, everybody become excited. That is the time you leave, okay? So it's totally uh, the other way around as a trader. So it's actually quite a boring business one, right? It's the same as any other, as your job, as your business or what. The day-to-day -day routine is is very mundane, uh, mundane. So you just do this, 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 this. You just do accordingly, then you see the result. But if you do the orange side, <laughs> you jump in when it's really excited. Oh, wow, wow, all in, all in. Very exciting, but you don't make money. So what do you make? You make... Uh, you do make something, you gain some entertainment value, okay? You feel so excited every day, you go out, uh, have tea with your friend, yam cha. You talk about gloves or how much you make, but you never take profit, okay? So in the end, it's lost, but you over the process, you enjoy it. It's an entertainment, but you pay money, okay? So here, it's no entertainment, it's boring, it's work, it's task to do this, do this, do this, do this, and TP, when, 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 you do it like, like working, lah, okay? But it makes you money, okay? So again, if you love it, then you can do it better. Lah. So I got this very funny video you can watch. Uh. Okay, my music doesn't match it. Uh. <laughs> so this is exactly what happened. You cannot imagine uh, if got chance, I will show to my members. Lah. <laughs> These are the veterans. Okay, it's really funny. Anna. So the newbies will be ah down two thousand. Uh, maybe they jump in at eighteen thousand or nineteen thousand again. Okay, then the veterans is like oh come on, it's just a two thousand dollars dump. It's normal for Bitcoin. Okay, it's quite normal. <laughs> in fact, I'm looking for entry uh, on this tip itself. So like I mentioned, we, I, I myself, I will go in during the quiet times when nobody is looking for you, when you, it's a very clear signal when you ask people or you tell people about, hey, I'm buying Bitcoin, you know, it's 4,000, 5,000. Then they will tell you, you are crazy. It's going to be zero. It's going to disappear in a few years. Uh, all sorts of things are you. When you hear comments like that, typically you are buying cheap, provided you are buying the right thing. Uh. <laughs> if you buy really the wrong thing, then you'll forever be sleepy. Uh, okay? But uh, if you are buying the right thing, but when you buy it cheap, you tell people about it, people tell you, you must be crazy. Uh. This thing is going to zero. Okay, This thing is a scam, whatever shit. Uh, during the quiet time when most of the people are not interested, Typically, you get the best price one. I'm not just talking only. I will just show you when I enter my Bitcoin and Ethereum. Bitcoin, I typically just go in and hold it, okay? Because uh, if you talk about printing a lot of money, governments, so you talk about inflations in terms of uh, drop of value in your cash, okay? Then as an inflation hedge, it's always... Bitcoin, okay? While the other coins like Ethereum and the smaller ones, uh, some of them, very few of them have actual use purpose, okay? And the other rest of the two, three thousand small odds is totally bullshit, okay? So, uh, talking about this, let me give you a moment. I want to share this to my crypto group also. <laughs> Okay, wait a while. So, uh, if you have friends who are recently looking into Bitcoin and stuff like that, or uh, talking about trading and investing one, because you know, work from home, you can share this video with them. Will you give me a second? I just share with them.
Yes, so I was talking about Bitcoin, then I, I thought I should share with them also. Just now I wanted to put this whole thing on YouTube, but uh, apparently you can, I, as of current situation, I can either choose going live on Facebook or going live on YouTube only, cannot do both at the same time. So, so I'll be talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum, uh, I'll look, right. And then, I'll, of course, I'll go back to FKI and FCDO later. All right, cool. So, uh, back to what I was mentioning, I will always, uh, for Bitcoin, I will treat it as a, a sort of like in, inflation hedge, like, because I understand the situation now in the, uh, in the whole world, basically, uh, government is keep printing money and stuff like that. So, uh, it's going to be a hyperinflationary situation uh, in the coming few years to maybe a decade or something like that. Uh, it's definitely going that side already. So, uh, so when I actually entered most of my BDC, when you know, my friends tell me I'm crazy. <laughs> it was, uh, this was uh, after COVID. Okay, this was when when we start to lock down and then BC took a plunge also due to COVID. So I was buying around 4,005. I think I exited the 4,500 near 10,000. Okay, but uh, it's just a partial TP. La. So the rest I'm still holding 5,000, 5,006. Uh, I bought a lot uh, during the COVID plan. You can see a whole list of buying. It's all buy, 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 buy. So this 5003, 5006, keep on buying 5004, 7, 6000, 6007. Okay, then I stop already. Okay, so my average is around 6 to 7K, including the older ones like, uh, back in 2019, where I already bought around 6000. 8,000 or 7,000. So average is around, I think probably 7,000 or 8,000, something like that. And I added some uh, right before the breakout from 10,000. So I think the average is slightly higher than all this. It is around 8 or 9,000 probably. So that's my Bitcoin and I'm still holding. Uh, Bitcoin, like I say, I'll keep it long term as an inflation hedge against the losing value of money okay paper money but for ethereum eth is ethereum uh. ethereum is more like i like my uh midterm investment stuff like that so okay hi <laughs> diana is here sorry i didn't see so uh where was I? Okay, Ethereum, I will just do it like, uh, you know, you buy a stocks for a few months, that kind of thing, okay? So Ethereum, I will, a few months, uh, holding swing, then I will reassess, maybe I will TP, partial TP, I wait for the next dip, and then I re-enter again, stock of things like that. But I have a central portion where I'll keep for a longer term one and aiming for maybe I don't know. I don't have a target for Ethereum, but um, I have a target for Bitcoin, okay, which is very far. I don't want to tell you now so that you can tell me I'm crazy, <laughs> okay, uh, but it's more than 20,000, definitely more than 20,000. So what I'm going to do with the Ethereum holding portion is like, when I look at Bitcoin, I when it's around my Bitcoin target, then I'll probably just exit Ethereum together or maybe Ethereum after Bitcoin because the smaller coins tends to move a lot more after Bitcoin hit uh, a certain uh, new high and then the smaller coins will start to move exactly like stock market. If you are in stock market, you understand this, the big caps will move, move, move and 
push up the index to a certain high and then when the index starts to sideway, do nothing sleepy, that's when all the punters jump in and you know start roaring all the small stocks. Okay. Same thing in crypto world, same thing on when Bitcoin goes up, then all the small stocks or the small coins will be very quiet and yes, the, the king moving, uh, the Tylo is moving, okay, so they keep quiet. So once Bitcoin hit a high and start to stall, and then the small coins come in, really. the only exception being Ethereum, okay. Ethereum tends to move together because it really has its own back backing, its own followers, and it really basically is like the a handful few uh, small coins, ox coins that actually has a usage purpose. Okay, so that's the difference. Uh, it is actually usable. It's a smart contract stuff like that. Uh, don't want to go too much detail in it. Uh, but yeah, I was buying all the while. Uh, you you can see this is twenty nineteen September, so it's uh, one year plus already, right? So I was buying below 200 at that time. Still holding this, still holding this. But uh, most of the most of the thing comes after after this year, May. Uh, I bought a lot more around 200. After the COVID plant, it was the nicest higher low on the daily chart. So it was just, uh, I didn't all in, lah, okay? But uh, most of the the funds, most of the the money I make from U.S. market trading, uh, Kuroi, uh, Dow and Nasdaq, the dollars, it's all, it's all here already. <laughs> it's almost all here already. Because I still have, remember I still have the local futures? Okay, the local futures is typically my makan money, la, right? So my daily expenses come from the local futures, which is more than enough for me really. So my US market proceeds all food come in here and come in here. Really. So, which is nicer that way. Like if I use, let's say I use CPO trading, you know, you earn ringgit and then you go and buy something in dollar. It's very really sad on, you know, <laughs> discount 25% very really sad. So I use my dollar profits from Kroy, from US futures. Then I use and buy Bitcoin, which is same on par in terms of the in terms of the dollar lah, Okay, so it feels easier. Okay, if you want to buy one Bitcoin with CPO profit in ringgit, wow, very sad lah. Like now it's uh, how much is it now? Sixteen thousand, I think, times four, four six seventy sixty four thousand. Okay, ringgit. So it sounds a lot more la, compared to sixteen thousand, right? So sixteen thousand dollar, I think it sounds okay or if I buy with dollar, right? Two hundred dollars, okay well. <laughs> but now it's uh now it's five hundred really la, right? So um you know always go in when it's quiet. This is what uh professional traders will do and then you don't have to care what people say once you have done all your homework you believe in your analysis just go for it okay because um a lot of things on our people you say a lot of things next time if got time i can screenshot the message and show you <laughs> they call you crazy they call you what the heck you dreaming are you ten thousand uh one hundred thousand of bitcoin in your dreams or whatever shit also <laughs> Don't care, okay? So, uh, did I ask people to buy? Yes, I actually asked uh, my CPO members to buy Ethereum also uh, much later into the spike because uh, lower risk, ma, okay? Mm. If I ask to buy during COVID lockdown in March, I think nobody will entertain me. <laughs> Everybody's so busy with the virus and uh, loss of job and then work from home, stuff like that. But, the next wave up, okay, 300 something, then uh, I, I did ask them to buy some. If you are in my Telegram group, public Telegram group, yep, I do ask, I do post in the public group also, I think. Let me check. Huh?
Okay, now you see. Uh, okay, now you are seeing my uh, my public group Telegram group is called My Drink Space by JK. So let's check where I posted the Ethereum by. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. Uh. I posted quite a while ago. Uh. This was the, this was in July. Okay. So July, I asked to buy the time is 345. This is similar to the uh, coaching group one. Uh. Okay. Uh, but I did ask them to buy like much earlier. And I remember. Okay. Now you see April. Yeah, I remember this one I posted also, but I don't know uh, because in April everybody is busy with the in April. Remember back in mid of March, then all the lockdown virus thing starts to kick in. So early April, you see I posted this in my this is my public telegram channel. It was 146. My goodness, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I think few, very few people actually took action and buy it. 146 sounds so cheap now, right? <laughs> but back in April, you say, what the hell? What coin is this? $145. Uh. Then you compare to your stocks in Ringgit, and then you think this is like crazy expensive. Now it's 500. The high was $600. Okay. So this is like triple or quadruple already if you bought this one, right? So, but again, when when it clung like this, of course, this is uh, triggered by COVID. Uh, actually, I thought it was like a, you know, retracement to this area. And then it will continue up uh, according to the previous momentum. Uh, but because the COVID hit and then it starts to clung another one more long leg down. And then people think, oh, it's going to be a gone case, really, it's going to zero, blah, blah, blah. I you got know, people comment like this in my Facebook page. Huh? So if I really care what they say, then I'm not a trader, really. <laughs> okay. So as a trader, you do your homework. You think this is the setup you want, you want to buy, just go in. And once you go in, whatever other people say, it doesn't matter, really. Just follow your plan. If you go and care what people say, uh, you are not trading, okay? You are not trading your own idea, okay? You are trading someone else's idea and all the troubles will arise when you trade someone else's idea. Let's say this one goes down to 140, then you will be busy. Hey, how are how, uh, down for $4? So you ask me to buy 145, you ask those people back and, and then you keep on have to refer back to those people because it's their idea, it's not your own idea, which is why I think tips groups are absolute uh, nonsense one. You, you, you just can't trade if it's not your own idea, okay? Even if you can follow the tips, you won't have the conviction, the confidence to hold it. And so 145 up to 160, wow, faster run ready. You won't be able to hold until 600 because you don't understand the whole picture because it's not from your own effort doing the homework. Okay, you didn't do your own research. We call it DYOR, do your own research. Okay, so uh, uh, as you can see, this was in April, totally cheap right now. Look at it. I wonder how many people bought it. La. Okay, but um, if it's yours, it's yours. La. This is uh, one of the ideas you should adopt when we talk about uh, trading and stuff like that. When it's not yours, it's, uh, it's very hard. Uh, you cannot just, because people buy it, then you buy it, then it's very hard. Uh, okay, so you see I got all the freebies inside here. <laughs> so if you're not here yet, this is my Telegram channel. Just Telegram and look for my train space. Okay, this is the one, this one. Okay, let's go back to the, I got a lot of info just now, I compound one. Alright, so this one was my special 
reminder for besides posting then i just ask them to look into this because they are traders they are trained to look at charts they will know and when i say this one it looks to buy they'll go and open the chart and look at it i don't know lah, whether they open the chart or not okay but and then i give them a target is uh roughly 50 percent from and i give them the time target also is eight to 12 weeks okay meaning you have the understanding that you need to hold this thing one okay so you need to hold for eight to 12 weeks you can target conservative 50 percent which already hit up okay so they bought around 300 plus and it went to 600 500 plus it's already 63 percent so I already asked to TP, yeah. <laughs> so I was saying, if you if you continue to hold, it's higher risk. Then you have to understand what you are doing. Then you have to manage your own thing, right? Because uh, I'm done for the buy call, okay. So uh, if you want to trail it, it's up to you, right? So every week I show you how much I made. So honestly, this is the first loss, uh, significant loss, lah. Not significant. Lah. I do some scalps which I didn't post and uh, big win, small win, some small win, small loss. But this one is uh, one of the one, you know, I'm bear buyers on the index. Okay, so I was shorting and then the budget comes and goes <laughs> without, a, without a conclusion. Okay, uh, but uh, they say it's approved. Uh, so FKI actually moves up on Thursday afternoon. So it hit my stop loss really partial stop loss because I have different tier entry. Okay, so the lower entries already stop out, but I still got one shot uh, from 1006. I think above 1006, still holding. Okay, so this one of the it's a mistake. La, okay, it's a mistake because I added shot quite low. So this is the first mistake I make in November month. I was actually aiming for, you know, November is ending already, 27 already. I was aiming for 100% no mistakes. No mistake doesn't mean no loss, huh? okay? No mistakes means you follow your plan, you do everything you should do, and don't do the extra nonsense things. <laughs> that one is no mistakes. But I got one mistake. This loss is a mistake, all right? And then I have the... I have the... TPO position still running, long position, so... It's a long wait throughout the week, it's required, and then it starts to move, okay? So, pro traders already build their positions when it's quiet, right? Okay, so I build my positions when it's quiet, and then I waited, and then it starts to move. And then if you are, uh, if you are this group of traders, <laughs> then probably you jump in today, okay? And then maybe you get hit during the volatility or what, okay? So it's a different thing and it's still running. Huh? So I didn't say it's position close, but this is close already, right? So um, people like to ask me, wow, you make 10,000, 20,000. Uh, I want to show you that if you want to make five figure profits, you need to be able to handle at least four figure losses or so. This is very typical ratio in the trading world. Uh, you don't imagine making 10, 20, 30,000, 100,000, but you cannot take losses. One, two dollars losses, you want to cry. That one is uh, tough, okay? Because it's a ratio thing, it's like two to one. So if you want to make 10,000, you need to have the gut to handle 5,000 losses around there, lah, okay? So if you can't handle a few thousand losses, you won't be able to carry something and make make it 10 uh, or 5 figure. So it's a, it's a level of acceptance in terms of risk and stuff like that. Of course, I didn't start it so big. La. I started with one lot, making few hundreds and then, and then making few thousands, thousand, thousand plus two thousand and then slowly up. Okay. So when I make one thousand, typically my profits one thousand, then I'll be I'll be facing few hundred losses, okay? So it's just part of parcel in trading, right? So uh, I want to show you the real side of trading where you want to make this kind of profits. This is 
this is very good example side by side okay you want this kind of profits you need to be able to handle thousand two thousand losses uh, that's how it works uh, right so talking about the budget everyone think is approved right i also think it's approved on thursday and then suddenly i don't know why this time the budget so draggy and last time you know all the years before budget and then they talk and then all the mps just snap table like that and then it's passed and then game over okay cold shop wow this time drag and then drag and then drag for so long <laughs> so dramatic and so and then until now only we know all oh, they are two stage one no, in budget approval so what they approve is like stage one you know how how is stage one approved is voice it's called voice vote means all the MP in the that one you see it, okay like a like a big meeting and then you just say who, who agree one just raise your hand and then make some sound so they make some sound and then they just roughly check or oh, most hands are up then we are passed away that's it so we waited for so long one just for them to raise their hands and then say pass that's it you know that's what happened on Thursday so they just raise their hand then they roughly check you know visual gauge see and then say it's more hands up than down and we pass it approved and then all the papers come and say it's approved and then later on they say there's a stage two approval you know what a, whatever stage they call it so uh, overall it means there are still chance for a u-turn okay so it's uh not it's not approved yet uh basically it's not approved yet uh, conclusion okay so uh, when is it going to go to stage two? It's uh, I think next week. Okay, next week they have to conclude this by early that early December. Okay, so as a traders in the local market, again, too bad for us. We need to endure another week of volatility. Okay, as you can see, the index is waiting, waiting for this news also. So there are some revision on Thursday that they did. Uh, one of the biggest one is the EPF withdrawal. Last time, uh, initially they say you need to be, you need to, you know, be jobless, lost your job because of the COVID pandemic. Uh, you lost source of income, stuff like that. Then only you can touch your EPF one. But now, if you receive a pay cut due to due to the pandemic itself, due to working from home or reduced hours. Uh, if you have pay cuts, it's enough for you to to actually have uh, fulfill the condition to actually withdraw EPF one, and then you can withdraw up to ten thousand. So again, uh, I don't have pay cuts. <laughs> I didn't lost my job. So uh, hopefully this doesn't apply to most of us, lah. Okay. Uh, if can, if can, I wish to withdraw everything out and then you know i manage my own money i don't think epf is doing a good job also uh. they give us five six percent money and don't have much insight because i you know i only work for one year and then i come out and trade already on my own so i don't have much in epf one and then epf two i already take out whenever i can <laughs> because I would rather, you know, manage my money myself, which I think is a much better return than putting there. Okay. So again, it's not for us. Long, okay. I can't take out if I if I can, I want to take out 10,000 or so. <laughs> and the 500 or so, 500, uh, that one can, like, that one can. And then all these are for the B40s. Like, and then additional allocation for the frontliners fighting COVID-19 one, which is really good. And this e e earlier, I am not sure, is it the allocation for buying laptops or stuff like that one for students? I think so. Okay, and additional 300 uh, allowance for the frontliners. And they have really strict, uh, as far as I, am con I know, they are really strict uh, in terms of who are defined as the frontliners is totally those who are in direct contact with the COVID-19 patients only, only direct contact only. So actually not many uh, frontliners uh, in terms of their definitions. Uh, okay. So many in the 
medical uh medical side of things and medical industry and they actually uh exposed to the risk but uh not directly deal with the patient so they don't get it okay but they are still at risk right? because they are really you know in the same facility and stuff like that so uh it's very limited people on the the real frontliners and okay and the rest uh, uh nothing Okay, only the special, this is a tax cut for the SME. This one is uh, targeted for the SME. One. Okay, so this one uh, quite okay, but really nothing much long, nothing much. The only one for M40 is uh, where M40 borrowers uh, pre hunting loan again is, uh, again is uh, more to business. So for individuals, nothing much, uh, except a lot more for B40s. Lah. Okay, so uh, again, this thing will actually conclude only next week. So we are waiting for stage two, right? So more volatility, lah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll talk about the chart later, right? So uh, a few things I want to mention is uh, our government is taking the 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 vaccine from Pfizer already. Okay, Pfizer is the one which is more successful, 95% success rate. Okay, so they already contract for next year, quarter one, quarter two, and quarter three, and then it will cover like 20% of Malaysian, okay, our population. Uh, I don't know how they are going to do it, but I hope they are not making it mandatory because I, I myself will will not go take the vaccine <laughs> okay i don't believe in vaccines okay that's another long story already okay uh this one uh another news for this week is actually uh trump he's saying he kind of like uh, loosen his uh you know, his uh, stand ready, he said, okay, let's proceed with the transition to Biden and stuff like that. And then uh, there's, call, there's one committee called Electoral College. Uh, it's the Electoral College that decides, uh, they actually name the presidents. It's not from the votes itself, okay? It's this Electoral College that will name the presidents and the uh, vice presidents. So, he said, as long as uh, until Electoral College call Biden's win, then he will leave White House. Okay, so there's still room here, but I think most likely is uh, we are going to see a transition to Biden. So what this means to the market, this is the bigger question. Okay, um, no matter who come into the White House, as long as they start as the new president, uh, the direction now for US is they will start stimulus, especially for Biden. He has a lot of stimulus plan in package in his plan. Okay, his uh, his uh, manifesto is all about helping people, uh, you know, uh, recover from COVID and stuff like that. So he he will print more money. Basically, the conclusion is he will print more money, and then he suggest to assign Janet Yellen, the previous uh, Fed chairman, chairwoman, to be their treasury secretary. Okay, means it's like our finance minister like that. Lah. Okay, so Janet Yellen is kind of more Darwish, Darwish means she is okay with printing money. Lah. So everything aligned to printing more money uh, in the future, printing more USD. Okay, so basically the the team for Biden is, in terms of market uh, traders' uh, anger, is more printing, more money printing. More money printing means USD will be weakened, and then relatively ringgit will tend to be stronger. Okay, stronger ringgit means uh, well, it's better for economy lah, right? Better than a weak in ringgit, but uh, is it's bad for exports? Okay, exports. Because your your currency is stronger, man. so it's bad for your exporters. All right. So we have a balance of exporters and local, you know, local focus uh, companies in the KLCI component. So overall, the index should be okay, one. 
it will not be affected as much, but it will tend to be more towards the bullish side uh, because of stronger ring it. And then if we talk about CPO, then it's uh it's bad for export, so it's bad, it's kind of bad for CPO export, so it's bearish, okay. But um I'm talking stronger ringgit, uh, it's bearish for CPO exports. So it's kind of bearish for CPO price, but uh, a weaker dollar in terms of commodity futures, weaker dollar tends to boost commodity prices, okay? So they are bullish and bearish factor at the same time. So I think it's, uh, again, it's square off already. So basically, you can say it's nothing, nothing much lah for for us. But the stability of uh, the president transition uh, is actually uh, a bullish factor generally for the market. Okay, rather than you know he do a lot of stuff and make it really hard for for the new president stuff like that. A lot of volatility. That one is bad for the market. Okay, but if he really you know uh, follow the rules and then just leave and let the next president come in, then uh, it's all good. Okay, smooth transition is, is kind of bullish, generally bullish, okay? But if any funny stuff comes up, okay, because there are still room to, just like our budget, there's still room to U-turn one, right? So uh, if anything funny happens, then uh, volatility is here, it's kind of bearish, okay? But if nothing happens, then it's generally bullish. For their market, it's already bullish already, but for us, actually, the effect is quite minimal, right? Okay, and then uh, this one is, I I just, uh, I heard it from this webinar from Luno. If you don't know, Luno is uh, the one and only regulated, means got license one, uh, where you can buy sell cryptocurrency, and, right, Luno, right? <clears throat> I don't, I don't use Luno. Uh, all these stuff are from direct from Binance exchange, uh, from crypto exchange. So I go direct to crypto exchange. I don't use third party. So Luno is like third party. They buy from the exchanges for you and then they sell it to you. Okay, you just use their platform only. So you don't have to deal with the many exchanges. But of course, the price is uh, is a little bit different from going direct. Lah, okay, I think it's a bit premium at least. Okay. So I think last week I talked about the the crypto exchange I use really is called Binance. Okay. So Luno is the local solution for you lah. If you don't want to go foreign or stuff like that, you can use your ringgit and change to crypto in Luno. So uh, I won't use it uh, for one simple reason because do you do you guys realize that the government is taxing glove makers? Okay, because glove stocks fly a lot higher, just because the glove makes a lot of money, glove makers like Top Glove and Supermax and stuff, right? They actually, you know, come with a tax just to tax them because they make a lot more money. They know they make money. So imagine Luno is a, is a licensed regulator. Regulated means government knows who are in Luno, period. Okay, regulated means government knows you are buying how many Bitcoin or how many Ethereum in Luno. That means regulated, okay? Means they do a lot of KYC. They know who is inside. They know how much you hold, all right? So, uh, and I don't like that because imagine if let's say my prediction is true, Bitcoin go to 100,000. <laughs> okay, no lah. So if let's say Bitcoin goes up a lot, government will know. <laughs> And then they will start to come up with some tax. And then how they tax you? They will tax you through this one. So if you have holdings here, you want to, you know, transact inside here, congratulations, maybe they'll hit you with a tax. Okay. So that's one of the things I don't want. Because uh, if you pay the money, they are not they are not using it wisely. Lah. So I don't like to give them money. And so I if I can avoid, then I can avoid. Lah. Okay, so I don't use this one. And then I don't like the spread also. The price is not nice. You have to wait to get uh, a good price. But in these exchanges, man, the volume is worldwide volume. These are the top volumes. 
you bring in and then it will go up ten dollars really so liquidity is not a problem so i'm a trader i like places with good liquidity i don't want to go to places where i need to wait to get the price i want and then i may get uh slap with a tax when i sell oh sucks man i don't want that kind of things but you come with some metrics you know this is uh data from luna huh? there are only 20 percent female uh in luno 80 percent are male so they they say only very few women actually uh bought crypto out okay uh, i'm not inside the 20 or 80 because i'm not inside that their wallet <laughs> And then they say 68% bought crypto for investment. I highly doubt that. <laughs> I highly doubt this one. Uh, I see a lot of hunters just come in because it's 18,000 and then make a little bit money they sell already. So I don't know how much, how many of these portion actually are investment. But for myself, it's investment. It's about the only investment I do right now. Okay. And the average age group is 30 to 49 years, so which is uh which is yeah, la, logic la, okay, which is also what I, I noticed. Maybe I think this one slightly uh younger. This is their data, I remember. So only the 30 to 49 years old one are in Luno, basically just like that. La. I tell you a lot of youngsters are uh, 20 something, 19, 18 one. Okay, they are here, they are definitely in the crypto exchange one <laughs> they are not in luno all right so uh it's not that all people 30 to 49 one are only all 30 to 49 one are in crypto but actually the youngest one are in but they are not using luno they are using the direct crypto exchange like me using the direct crypto exchange right and then remember the charts you know these charts are used are called trading view platform so every uh, Black Friday means every time, every year during Thanksgiving, they will do uh, Black Friday sales one. So remember to, you know, take advantage of this one is like half price one. Okay. So if you are using the charts, actively trading, you can really look into this, uh, this uh, sales, Black Friday sales, because they only do once a year. Lah, and this is the cheapest you get. Uh, it's much cheaper than if you're using it for local futures, it's much cheaper than the, the other platforms. So a Busa station, for example, uh, is 70 to 80 ringgit. Okay. This one is like uh, 12 to 13 on 50% offer. Huh? It's like $13 only per month. Means it's around, around 50 bucks, 50 ringgit. Okay. But the cheapest one, local one is 70 to 80 station and I know called next view is even more expensive it's 200 plus okay then those are the things I was using before before there is this thing called trading view okay the trading will just uh, appear around 2010 or something like that so before that I was using you know the expensive stuff so that's why I I just without a doubt switch to trading view because it's much cheaper okay I was paying 200 plus for my CPO and FKI charts with next view last time. Okay, so it's crazy. And, but the candles are really nice at next view, but it's okay. You know, this is half, you know, more than half price using trading view and they have a lot better features. Okay, a lot much more better features. Uh, you can even do paper trading inside and stuff like that. Lah, right, so remember to check out the back prices. I'll put the link uh, under the video this video later on okay let's go real quick to the charts i didn't update my uh trading view ideas because hey why is it here so they give me extra one month free i also don't know why i show you one i got one free month somehow extra one free month okay so i also don't know why la. but as you can see i already over subscribed for 400 days already <laughs> okay i'm subscribed until like next two years but if i want i can still buy now la. right so i got extra one month free so maybe i'll instead of 12 months i get 13 months right 
So this is much cheaper than any other local platforms you can get, right? So I'll just top up later on before the offer is gone. It's only, it's the last day, right? Uh, let's go real quick to my charts. I have an update because uh, it's still within the same uh, same idea, lah, okay? So my idea for FKI was, is going to be subway down as long as it stays below 1620 sec, okay? It's going to be sideways down for FKI. Uh, as long as it stays below 162x, okay? Uh, this uptrend line already broken. So it's the still same, it's still the same idea on FKI. It's already broken, drop, I shorted this one and TP ready. Then uh, I have another shot around here and then it cuts me, okay? So that's that was the loss uh, during or uh, after the budget uh, sort of approved, la, partial approved, okay? And it starts at the high, but it cannot break this high, okay? And then if you can remember, the previous high was uh, around here, okay? 16.22, okay? So this is a make or break uh, situation here. La. Basically, the market is like waiting for the, for the budget uh, outcome. Okay, budget is more uh, uh, will affect the FKI or KLCI index more than CPO, right? So it's kind of waiting the whole week and kind of finish towards the higher side, but it's still within the range. And then it's uh, totally uh, based on what happens to the budget, okay, next week. So nothing much to, to actually uh, update, but Let's say, let's say it breaks this one and then it will be bullish already. La. Let's say it breaks 1006, it will be bullish already. So I go to the chart. So I give you the blank one so you can see that. Okay. So if we break here, it's all the way here, you see, okay? The next one is here, yeah, 1007, right? So we break here, it's a bullish signal already, right? It's looking quite, uh, I think it's more to sideways. Uh. The momentum doesn't look like want to break up yet, okay? It's, it's more bearish than bullish here, okay? So I think we will still, you know, sideway or down as long as we don't break this one. But if let's say we break this one, then it's a clear bull case already. Uh, the next uh, nearest one is 1650-2007. Okay. So it's again a round number thing. But before that, all eyes on the budget, right? Next week, early next week, I think they will make a decision. And let's say the opposition uh, able to, you know, throw over the <laughs> existing party, then a lot of chaos really, and this one may come back here, here, or here, right? So I'll be ready for that, but I think I won't be doing index anymore, okay? Because uh, December tend to be bullish for index, but I don't know how it will go this year, given that everything is more chaotic, right? So uh, CPO, I go to my idea first. CPO again, I, I didn't update because it's still waiting there. All right, when I posted, it's uh, as long as 3002 hole, we are going to see rally to 3.4 to 3.6. Actually, it hit 3.4 already, park, and then we TP, and then it was all waiting after that. So, uh, as of today's close, although it hang for the whole week, today close high, right? So, it's really nice bullish candle on the weekly, okay? Weekly, uh, yeah, weekly close really, ma. so this is a weekly close. It's really bullish and then, you know, we tested the support here, really nicely supported and bounced. So again, I think this will continue outwards, right? Uh, go to the real chart. So you can't see it really, you need to, you know, drop it down. Because <laughs> it's so bullish, right? As you can see, this is the daily. Uh, uh, if you are actively in the market, 
you can't feel it from these few candles but if you are creating the whole week i'm telling you it's super boring and blah, 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 blah. it's all around here until today today is really really volatile open here go down and then come back up okay but the good thing is close high and it's higher than the previous uh, nearest uh, nearest resistance small resistance uh. so the next step for it is to challenge here look 3004 uh, quite clear uh, for CPU. So again, uh, there will be slight effect uh, how the budget thing goes. It will have slight effect on CPU because let's say it doesn't go nicely, the budget is not approved and then you know all the chaotic come and then you know probably the existing ruling party will be will be throw over and then we may have flash election stuff like that. Those are not good things for CPU. Okay. But technically, we are bullish. Okay, until then, then we have to see if let's say all those things come in, maybe you cannot break here, and then we'll know already as a trader. Then you will have to be cautious, lah. Okay, so the next level to watch is definitely three thousand four. You have to break this to go higher, and my target is around three point five to three point six R three here, R two or R three either one. Okay. So I'm waiting for this very nice volume today, right? So same things still apply. We still have this hole on the major support. So we are likely to see uh, really to R1 to R3. So this time R1 is quite important. It has to break R1 to, to go higher, lah, obviously. Okay. So I let you see the, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of my, uh, crypto futures exchange. I don't use it as much really because now I hold cash. Okay, so this is like leverage one. Okay, uh, you can see thousand seven again. So why no candles one? So really, I got a lot uh, of a lot of people who jump in at eighteen and nineteen thousand. A lot you be you be you can't believe it, but a lot of people actually jump in at eighteen and nineteen thousand, and then now they are very. Kanchong already, <laughs> okay, because it dropped 2,000, right? You can see it here and I show you here. Look at the, this daily chart. Huh? Look at the candles. <laughs> this one is, uh, you know, this 1,009, 8,009, 19,000 dropped to 17,000, 2,000 dollars drop. <laughs> this one is Ethereum uh, from around, from around 600. Okay, drop all the way to to below five hundred. Okay, I should pick up some around here four hundred and eighty eight. Oh my goodness! Okay, it's right here at the tail. I got some at four eight eight. Okay, but it doesn't look like it want to go up yet. So I still have portions I may wait around here or here. Okay, but this is a a buy high situation really. If you are not confident with crypto and stuff like that, you shouldn't be buying at this level at. Oh, okay, it's five hundred dollars. It's not cheap. Okay, depends on how how much you think the future value is. But uh, for me, it's dirt cheap lah. Okay, seventeen thousand not so cheap. Also, <laughs> I won't buy. I won't do anything here already. Uh, I won't probably won't do anything for Bitcoin unless the bugger come and test here. Lah. Yeah, unless it come come back to this area thirteen to fourteen thousand. Okay, and then I will look at it. Uh, by the way, this is my weekly projection earlier. This is the exact chart. So look at that. So uh, I was expecting some kind of dip also. Okay, so it's happening now. I think so. The best case is for it to go to fourteen to to around 14 to 16,000, 14, 15,000, then I'll consider buying some. But it's just a light buying radius. Most of my, like I show you just now, most of my entry are around here. And sure, I got some here also, all the way back in 2019 here, uh, here, and here, okay? Not here, lah, okay? So, like that, lah. my entrance, my entry is around this area. So I'm pretty safe already. I don't care how much it drops on, as long as it goes higher, goes higher, all right? So my uh, year-end target, 19 to 20K, is already reached. Uh, look at this high. It's uh, 19, 19497, OK? 
okay, 1497, okay. So it's about there already. Uh. It starts to hang maybe next quarter, quarter one in 2021, you'll see a breakout higher, okay. But before that, I think, I don't think we'll see much higher price. Uh. But some people are really bullish. They say it will break out this year, but I don't know. I just keep to my plan. Uh. You break out, then better, better cash for me, lah. If don't break out also, I'm okay. You drop here, maybe I'll pick you a little bit more, pick pick up some here. Okay. But you hang here, then I won't I won't buy high already. Okay. Because it's already near the previous high. But for Ethereum is a different case. Why I'm buying? Because uh it still have some space to go. <clears throat> You can look at this, we are only like halfway, okay? So it's still reasonable to buy high here, <laughs> okay? But it needs to be actively monitored really. It's not like buying here. Buying here, you can, you know, close eyes and come back five years later, really. But this one, not only five years, like two years. <laughs> two years later, I need to get out already from this, okay? So it's a really nice test. You can see it's a support here. All the way back here is a support. So I bought some at the right at the tail here yesterday night. Okay. So if it goes down further, maybe around here for still 400 plus. Huh? Okay. I still have some portions left to add. Uh, okay. And then I'll wait for here already. So my target for this high entry is 800. For the rest, I will just hold until maybe 1000 or plus. Okay. Okay, I think that's it for this week. See you next week. Bye. Thanks for watching. So I want to, uh, if you guys have people who really, you know, uh, into trading and stuff like that one, do share the video with them. Uh, because it's especially now now at the market high that people need some real trading insights uh, rather than all the woo ha all in uh, is going to three hundred thousand uh, those are bullshit uh, okay so uh, those are things so uh, if you just join then you miss it really uh, you remind back and see the replay because I actually talk about Bitcoin and. Ethereum outlook and how you're supposed to manage the position if you are coming in at the high now, okay, and uh, also on FKN CPO outlook. So for local traders, do look at the budget uh, next week. It's going to make some volatility in the index, but less on CPO, okay. So see you next week. <laughs> Bye.